I'm sure many of you may already know that I'm building up my very own XY GT HO replica here at home in the shed. And look at what I've pulled out from underneath the bench. I've had them for about 10 years and they're super rare. They're a Cleveland 4V closed chamber cylinder head, just like they used to run on these things back in their day. And look at the size of the ports. They are absolutely ginormous. You could fit your fist in the things almost. But when it comes to port efficiency and design, bigger is not always better. And when it comes to someone who really knows their stuff about cylinder heads, it's Eddie Woods from Head Stud Developments. He's been around for many, many years. He's done a lot of work for top race teams and famous race drivers. So let's go down there and take a look. He is the creator and sustainer of all the worlds, whether those worlds are known or unknown to mankind. Here at HSD we're often asked where we get our supply of engine valves from. Because the shape of a valve is so important we prefer to manufacture our own valves. Today we'll be manufacturing a 944 Porsche valve out of a stainless steel blank which looks something like that. Because this is only a small run, a quantity of four, we'll be doing it on a manually operated copy lathe. Normally we'll do a run like this on a CNC operated machine. That way we can be sure that all the shapes and all the valve sizes are exactly the same. Because of the importance of airflow across the back of a valve, in some instances up to 20 horsepower improvement can be made in an engine. We check each batch of valves on an optical projector. What this does is throw a light across the back of the valve that we've just produced and it enlarges at 25% up onto the screen. By doing so we can check that the profile is exactly what we want it to be. Because the feed rate of the machine can leave concentric lines around the back of the valve and can cause stress fractures, which, won't, which may cause the head of the valve to drop off, we'll now swirl polish the back of the valve, which will leave lines emanating from the valve stem across the back of the valve and minimise the risk of valve failure later on. There is a common belief that swirl polishing will enhance the airflow across the back of the valve. In over 20 years of valve manufacture, I've never been able to prove or disprove that theory. A lot of our work here consists of freshening up old race cylinder heads. This is off an open wheeled race car, been around for many, many years. This cylinder head was done when the belief was that porting and polishing was the most effective way to gain horsepower. Through testing and airflow research we've discovered that a textured port is far better than a polished port. You can still leave a polish in the combustion chamber as this has been done but certainly the port itself needs to have texture so the air will tumble and mix with the fuel. Because it's important to maintain equal airflow through all of the ports, we measure each port with a set of calipers or we use templates. That way we can maintain correct shape throughout the cylinder head. Okay, we often get asked the difference between a nine port and a 12 port six cylinder Holden head. If you look at the port configuration here, you can see a Siamese intake port, whereas on the blue motor head, we have individual intake ports. Whilst this produces a lot of low down torque, that configuration will produce more mid-range and top end horsepower. That particular cylinder head will be producing around 320 horsepower, whereas a fully modified blue motor head would probably produce around 280 horsepower.
Here we can see very clearly the difference between a 351.4 V-cylinder head and a 351.2 V-cylinder head as cast. The 302 or 351 cylinder head in fully modified condition will make around 500 horsepower. It'll have good bottom end and good mid range, good for towing. These cylinder heads, the 351.4V which came out on the GT and the HO, will produce excellent horsepower, up around 600 plus horsepower, but you do suffer lack of performance from about idle up to about 3000 RPM. These cylinder heads really take off after that sort of RPM and will run right through to 600 horsepower quite comfortably. If we were going to build a Cleveland motor for a customer, we would probably choose the 4V cylinder head and then we would also choose to stroke the motor. By stroking it, we will create more air and the volume of air will be then more utilised by the size of the port. Because of manufacturer's specifications and tolerances, the intake port on a manifold is usually much smaller than the intake port on the cylinder head. This will allow for mismatch and no overlapping of the port. The mismatch is not always a bad thing. That can create an anti-reversion step between the manifold and the cylinder head, thus stopping air-fuel mixtures going back down the manifold on overlap. However, on a race car where you're trying to get and, and optimise the airflow as much as you can, you make that inlet port as close to the shape and the size of the intake port on the head as you can. A lot of people ask if they can have their cylinder heads flowed. Yes, certainly we can flow their cylinder heads and we're only too happy to do so. But simply flowing a cylinder head doesn't necessarily make horsepower. The horsepower is made by us knowing where to remove the material out of the cylinder head in the first place. The flow bench, while it's a very handy tool, is just that. It's a tool for measuring, nothing else.